Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at some mountain lion tips. So there certainly are some big new features in mountain lion, but there are also some tiny little improvements. Let's take a time to look at a few of these. So when you're working on a document in a pretty modern app like TextEdit, one that uses the new mountain lion features, you've got some new things in the file menu. You may have missed, for instance, the Save As choice that was there in Snow Leopard and everything before it. You don't have that anymore. You've got Duplicate just like you do in Lion. But in Mount Lion you can also hold down the Option key and Duplicate changes to Save As and now you can use it as you did in Snow Leopard and before. In addition you've also got some interesting things here like Move To. So you can actually be editing the document right in the middle of it in TextEdit or Pages or Numbers or some other app that supports this and use Move To to actually select a new location for that file. You don't have to go into the Finder to do it. In addition in the title bar here you've got the ability to click on it and you can see it brings up a menu and you've got things like Rename, uh, Move To, Move to iCloud uh, and Duplicate right in there. If I do rename, you can say I actually can type the new name right in the title bar. Now, the Notification Center is useful for lots of things, but did you know you can also use it as a Twitter client? If you go into your System Preferences and go into Mail, Contacts, and Calendars, this is where you handle all your different accounts, you can set up a Twitter account here. You just hit the plus button and you can choose Twitter. Um, if you go into that, you set, of course, your password and your username. And once you have that all set up, Instead of using the regular Twitter app, you can actually go into Notifications and see a little click to tweet here at the top and actually tweet right from inside of Notifications. So you've got two different new ways to get a web page offline in Safari. One of course is Reading List. You may have heard about this where now if you add something to your reading list it actually downloads it and it's available offline. So you can read that article on the airplane after you uh, add it to your reading list before boarding. Now another thing you can do that you can do before is you can email this page using the share button. That's not new. But one of the options here is you can send web content as and you can send it as one of various formats including PDF. And if you do that it will actually bundle up the page into a PDF just as if you print it and save it as a PDF and then you can email it. Now Launchpad also has a really cool new thing. If you go to Launchpad at the top you see a search field and you can actually start typing right away and it will go right into the search field. So you can quickly get to the app you want in a similar way you could do it with the Spotlight menu before. So you can just launch uh, Launchpad, go in here, start typing the name of the app and then you can actually even use the arrow keys to navigate further and then hit return to actually run that app. So if you were to actually set up a keyboard shortcut for Launchpad and you can see that there's a spot for one in keyboard shortcut, shortcuts right here. So I've got Launchpad and it's F7 here. So I can do F7 and then start typing what I want and hit return and it will launch that app. So an, a new quick way to launch the app completely with the keyboard. Finder sidebar has one new big trick. Before you had all these different things like your favorites and shared devices, things like that. Now you can actually reorder them. You can drag them around. So if you want to have your devices at the top, you can drag it up there and your devices will appear first before favorites and shared and any other items you may have in there. Now getting to the handy accessibility functions has never been easier. There's now a new keyboard shortcut. It's usually Command Option F5 and that brings up this quick little panel here where you can access some of the most common ones and you can hit preferences to jump to your regular accessibility system preferences. You may know about AirPlay mirroring, the ability to mirror your screen on your Apple TV. But here's something really cool. Uh, you can actually go here to volume. Of course you might already know you option click on volume and you get a list of devices to go out. You can also go into system preferences for this. And notice now that output devices include AirPlay. So my Apple TV I can send the audio from my Mac to Apple TV. I could also do it with other AirPlay audio only devices. So I could have an AirPlay speaker system in the room and wirelessly send my audio from my Mac to that speaker system. Now Lion added the ability to easily encrypt external drives using disk utility. But now you can actually do it right in the Finder. So here I have in my devices I've got a few drives here. I can control click on one and one of the options right here is encrypt that drive. So live with the, all the data on it I can actually 
add a password to it and it will go ahead and encrypt all the data on there. Of course you want to use this with caution. If you forget that password you can't get to any of that data on that drive ever again. And this step deals with Time Machine. Time Machine is great new functionality inside of Mountain Lion that wasn't available before. You can select a disk and add a disk to to Time Machine. So you can actually back up to two disks. If you have both of those disks present then basically alternates. Backs up to one and then the other every other hour. If you don't have them both present, like say you have a Time Machine backup drive at work and one at home, it will back up to the one available. So you can plug your MacBook into the backup drive at work and then bring your MacBook home, plug it into the one at home. It will keep backing up to both drives which is very handy. Now my last tip deals with notes but it's kind of an untip. It seems like every Mac site out there is talking about how you can pin notes to your desktop and use them like you could use sticky notes before. Well it's not quite true as everybody finds out when they try this. Here's what the tip is actually about. You double click on a note and it opens it up in its own window. So it's really cool. This kind of does look like a sticky note and you can resize it. And if you close the notes window You've got it right there. So you can actually go and do other things in the uh, in other apps in the Finder, and this little note will continue to be there as its own window. What you can't do is if you go into Notes here and you quit Notes, it doesn't stick around. So it's kind of a, a useful feature as long as you realize its limitations. So here's a look at some of my favorite miscellaneous tips from Mountain Lion. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.